as we've said many, many times, RVs fail. I guess I should say RV parts fail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today we're gonna share with you all of the spare parts that we carry and keep on hand just in case. We are coming up on four years of living in this thing full time. 24 seven, 365 since December of 17. And in that time and the many tens of thousands of miles that we've traveled, <laughs> things have broken. You've seen a lot of them. And we've kind of identified the things that we need to keep on hand so we can fix things quickly without having to wait on Amazon, things like that. Because We've learned the hard way. Yeah. Oh, we need this part. Crap. I gotta wait two days and you gotta find a workaround. So these are the things that we've found. Doesn't matter what kind of RV you have, these types of fuses you will need in varying amperages. Da -da -da. Band of light. <laughs> so pick up a box of these of varying sizes. You're gonna need them for the RV, for the truck, for the awnings, for all kinds of stuff. Anything DC usually has one of these fuses somewhere. Class A's, towables. All of them, mm -hmm. all of them. Next up are these style of fuses. I don't know if any Class A's have these. I know most towables do up on the front bay. You probably have a little DC bus where one side of it is here and the other side's here. And for us, they're 50 amp fuses. So have a few of these on hand. A little bonus tip, if you have a Lippert auto level system, the hydraulic system, that's usually connected to a 50 amp fuse. At least it was for Grand Design. They have since moved to 80 amp fuses and have authorized, for lack of a better word, self upgrades to those. We have a separate article on that, we'll link below but you replace that with an 80 amp fuse and your hydraulic system will perform much better. And how often have you had to replace that? Just the one, okay. just the one. But I've heard of others going. So when I ordered one for our hydraulic slides, I just got some extras. I just keep them on hand just in case because you're, you're not gonna find this at Home Depot, I don't think. You're gonna have to order this. I know I've seen this before. I feel like it goes up in the front bay and I feel like it goes to our inverter or something. Done, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a 400 amp class T fuse. And you're only gonna have this if you've installed or have had installed an inverter or some sort of high powered DC devices. That one you've had to replace multiple times, right? Yeah, and we have a video coming out on some of those problems that we've had with our inverter and why I've had to replace so many of these. So stay tuned for that. But the thing is when this does blow for whatever reason, we have no power because our inverter needs DC power to even pass through AC, so it's a, it's, we're dead in the water without one of these. So I know that we keep several of those on hand. <laughs> Next up are batteries of all shapes and sizes. Right, and you know, you wanna have your assortment of double A's and triple A's, and you know, that's just a consumable item, and you can find those pretty much anywhere, but where you're gonna run into trouble is if you need a battery for your TPMS sensor, your propane sensors, things like that. The specialty ones. Yeah, all these special coin style batteries. Mm -hmm. And of course they're all different. You know, we've got 2016, 2032s, we've got 13 ends, we got yeah, 123. So like our alarm system, touch pads, our door sensors. Yeah. All kinds of things that use different batteries in each thing. Go around your stuff and look at what it takes and just have some spares on hand because you don't want to be out in the middle of nowhere and need a 2032, these are pretty common, I think these are for our TPMS sensors, and not have it. So just have extra batteries on hand. Also, if you have a ring alarm system like we do, this is a rechargeable battery, but we have one extra. That way when we get a notification that our doorbell or our camera is low on battery, we swap it out, plug it in. Once it's charged, we put it in a drawer. We have one on hand. We also keep a few spare parts for our furnace. Yeah, if you've watched any of our videos where we've done some repairs on our furnace, you know that initially we had somebody repair it for us and then we learned. We learned that these two parts in particular fail on the regular. This is a sail switch that detects wind, detects your fan moving, and this is a thermal protection switch. Both of these things have to be satisfied, meaning that they're closed circuit to be able to operate your furnace. And we've had both of these go bad. So we keep spares on both of these. We also have a spare little thermocouple starter thing. I'm not even, you know, I, I think I saw this. It was one of those- Amazon. What'd you call that? It's a, it's a, it's a starter. starter thing? It's a thing that creates the spark to like 1 million volts. I don't know, I'm making that number up. But this is a starter in case that goes bad. I only bought this. We've never had to replace it. I bought it because Amazon told me I might need it. You know, he you, you might also like that. I'm like, well, yeah, that looks great. I'll cool. have it. Next on our list is something that I like to change frequently, especially lately, and it's AC um, 
filters. Thank you. <laughs> AC filters. And, you know, recently we've been in areas where we are near a lot of the wildfires out west. And we have to change these like monthly because yeah. they get so gooped up. Yeah, I used to just keep one extra on hand and I would order more if we needed to swap them because we run our middle AC more than anything. Mm -hmm. We recently replaced ours after just only a month and they were just black. Show them what you got. Can you tell which one's used and which one's new? That's a month old, <laughs> but like I said, we've been surrounded in smoke. So now we keep a full three sets on hand. And the thing is, we've also been in the desert for quite a while this summer. Yeah. And so we have been running our three ACs. And all three were very yeah. dirty. Yeah. And a little side note here, your AC probably doesn't come with these. They come with the kind you can rinse out, but those are not really very good for getting out actual smoke and particles and dust. They just get the large stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can rinse those out and they work fine with Tara and her issues with her health and everything we want to have as clean of air as possible. These are the only ones we've found made for RVs that are actually MERV rated. They're not, unfortunately, they're not reusable, so you can't rinse them. That's the drawback. And reuse them. But like for me, I know when they need replacing because I can smell it. Like I can just, I can smell a dirty filter. And if any of you out there are using something different that is reusable and rinsable, like the kind of electrostatic filters you can get for a home, I wasn't able to find any of those for RVs, but if you have any suggestions, please reach out down below and make a comment. We'd love to check it out. Like some that are MERV rated. Yeah, some that are actually MERV rated and have a good filter to it, not just a screen kind of thing, but yeah, let us know. Our next section of spare parts is all about plumbing. Like this guy, because how many of these have we left behind at a campsite? These won't break unless you leave them out in freezing weather like I did. We yeah. did have one break like that. And also, if you're in a rush leaving and you leave it behind. I did. I had the same one for like two and a half years, and then I left like three of them in a row. So now I carry an extra. Up to you if you're prone to leave stuff behind and you need a regulator, because you really do. Next up is a check valve. You might have seen our video recently where our check valve broke off the back of our water heater. But it was plastic, right? It was plastic. And that is going to break. I, I don't see any way around it. The way the, the Zarbies bounce around, that yeah. plastic check valve I think will break eventually. So have one of these on hand. You might want to just swap yours out preemptively. When we swapped ours with this brass one, I just ordered two because I want to spare just in case. Yeah. I do eventually want to replace PEX fittings. You'll notice probably in most RVs, you're going to have a lot of these that are made of plastic. Now there's a little debate on that, whether or not the plastic ones are the best thing to have because they have a little bit more give to them. Uh, I like the brass, unless it's going to be some place that's with a lot of torquing and stuff. I, I like the brass ones. You can buy an assortment online and a kit. It'll come with some crimps also, and even a tool to crimp it. So we'll have links for that below, but we like to have these on hand just in case something breaks in the plumbing, we can fix it. Also part of plumbing, things that we carry are O-rings. Now these little O-rings that go on your hose fittings, it's a good idea to have those. They wear out, they fall out. Sometimes you've got to double them up if you've got one of those hose bibs that is real shallow and you can't get it on all the way. It's good to have extras of those. But more importantly, you want extra O-rings for your sewer hose. Yes, this is clean. <laughs> because you'll sometimes be connecting one hose to another or your hose to your RV and you'll get drip, 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 drip. And that's gross. You it's just, gross. even if it's a small drip, you wanna fix it. Replace the O-ring, it'll fix it 99% of the time. So have some spares of these just in case. Usually you'll get a couple with a spare hose, but again, we'll have some links down below to get some extras. While we're talking about sewer hoses and leaking, I have three quick tips for you around that. First is this Valterra valve. When you're driving down the road, moving from campsite to campsite, the water up in the pipes and stuff is gonna to start to settle and come to the bottom. And when you go to take that cap off, you're gonna get a surprise and it's not a good one. If you have one of these Valterra valves, that can stay closed, you can remove the cap, get all your hookup done and then open the valve and let all that stuff go into the sewer hose where it's supposed to. Second tip around this is when you get to your campsite and you do get all your sewer hoses hooked up, open your gray tank first. Always test your hose with your gray tank. If you've got a misconnected fitting there or a leaky O-ring, you wanna find that out with gray water and not black water. third tip is P-trap. 
If you're going to leave your gray tank open like we do, then you want to put a P-trap in the line to stop sewer gases from getting up the pipe and into your tank and potentially into your RV. Some people will say don't ever leave any tanks open, but when you've got a washing machine and you're doing a few loads of laundry, you don't want to be coming out here and pulling the handle and making dumps all day. Just leave it open, put a P-trap in there, and you should be fine. Speaking of stinky things, uh, yeah. we had to replace, there was a valve or something that we replaced in the kitchen because I was having the smells that were like knocking me out, especially yeah, on travel yeah. days. We actually carried these around for a while because we heard they went bad. What are they? Air admittance valves. So this air admittance valve is designed to make air go this way, but not this way, not make air, but allow air to go this way, but not <laughs> this way. And that's so when you are running your sink, water can go down this way and it can pull air in that it needs to not create a vacuum, but not let the gas from your gray tanks out. And gray tanks stink. That's what I was gonna say. They sometimes create more odor than your black tanks will. Oh yeah. So we'll have a link to that video down below so you can see exactly where it is. But a little note, when I was shopping for extras of these, I found one that just looked really cool. It was a little more expensive, but it had great reviews, and I thought, well, let's just get the better one. And we had it on there for like three days, and it, it just stunk. So these little inexpensive ones are the way to go. We'll have links down below. Have at least one of these on hand, because that valve will go bad eventually, and your gray tank gases will come into your house via your sink. I'm sorry. You getting cool on me? I, I'm too cool. <laughs> I'm just too cool for this. No, I was like, I'm squinting, and my eyes hurt, so. We have some miscellaneous things that don't really fall into a categories, like these spare D-rings for the tie-downs mm -hmm. in the garage to keep Lucille nice and secure back there. We keep yeah. some of those. Yeah, we've broken a couple of those, but it was a couple, maybe a year and a half ago that mm -hmm. we replaced them. And just over time, at least in our instance, what happens is the D-ring starts to look like a P-ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it moves over and starts to bend. And once it starts to bend, it loses its strength and you just want to replace it. Yeah. We're good now, uh, but when we replaced them last time, a year and a half ago, I got some extras. So just we in case. We have them. And again, it's one of those things, if you actually break one of these while you're on the road, you want a replacement now, not three days from now. These aren't really parts, but we keep spares of command strips because you just never know because we use them not just to hang stuff on the walls, but to hang up our security alarm sensors and just all kinds of different things. Our, our ring doorbell is on via command strip. Mm -hmm. And every now and then they wear out and they fail and we have to replace them, but we also use them all the time. So they're a good thing to have on hand. Next miscellaneous item. Da, 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 da. If you have an RV lock, they're great. We love ours. We do get asked about them a lot if mm -hmm. we still like it. You know, it's one of those things we installed almost four years ago, and we haven't, we don't really think about it. it but it, I would, n I would not like it if I didn't have it. Oh no! We don't have to worry about taking our keys with us, and yeah. that's, that's awesome because if we can be forgetful sometimes and forget our keys. So. And if we have an emergency where we have to let a neighbor get it in and use our keypad mm -hmm. or something, we have. That or ability. you know, you know, our friends Phil and Stacy could have used. An RV lock. An yeah. RV lock <laughs> instead of having to climb through their window. For the record, they don't make them for Tiffin yet, otherwise yeah. they would have them. Yeah. Okay. Aside from replacing the batteries in those, those just take double A's. They beep at you and let you know, and we replace them maybe every eight months or so. We have had the keypad membranes go bad on them and just start flaking off and pulling off. They're super easy to replace. The replacements are only like five bucks. So last time I ordered some, I just got some spares of those. You can kind of see they're just little sticky things that go on there. I've got a couple for our door entries and a couple for our baggage doors. But it's a good idea to have them on hand. That's not something that's like critical. Oh my gosh, it's not gonna work if the keypad yeah. is ugly. Yeah. Even if the keypad comes off, you can still push the buttons as long as you know where yeah. they are. The last random little spare part that I like to carry because I know how our inverter works. Remember I mentioned that it can't pass through AC power if it doesn't have DC power. Well, just in case I have to bypass our inverter or maybe bypass our automatic transfer switch, something like that, I keep, I found this thing is really cool. I used to keep four of these little splices so I could splice each individual wire, but I found this one that has four built in. So I could take 6.3 Romex in, 6.3 Romex out, it comes with the heat shrink. I can bypass any AC system that is alternating current system, like our transfer switch or our inverter with one of these. So can you tell them an example of when you would need to use this? If our inverter just died, it would definitely need this because if our inverter dies, it's not going to pass through power, which means shore power is useless. So I would use this to bypass that. 
If our automatic transfer switch died, I would, could use it there also. Next up, towing items. Yes, first off is a lube plate. So you'll want to have one of these, unless you just really like dirty, messy, greasy <laughs> towing hitches. Uh, we don't, so we've always used one of these. But what happens with these is they wear out on the inside and just fall off. Now they would still function, but they're just a pain at that point to try to get it to stay on there and maybe hold it on while you're hitching. And that's not a safe thing. So whenever it falls off, I put on my spare, order a new one. And then you also keep an extra breakaway cable, right? Yes, also towing related. Maybe. Right here. <laughs> also towing related. So I keep a whole entire breakaway cable and switch and wiring and, and everything. A couple reasons for this, the breakaway cable itself can break or the switch can break or somebody might steal it. That was one of those things we heard about before we went full timing, mm -hmm. that bad people will come pull your breakaway switch or something. and. Uh, we, we've never seen it or heard it. I think it's just one of those rumors. I like the kind with the bungee cord that doesn't just hang all over the place. Uh, but this also brings up a little bit of a tip is you want to test these every now and then. Now, most RVers and most dealerships will tell you never ever pull your breakaway cable to like test your brakes, things like that. Because if you don't put it back in in a reasonable time, it can, you know, burn out your brakes because it applies like full braking, 12 volt power. You know, yeah. it's, it's for an emergency only but you want it to work in an emergency. Yeah. And the last time we tested ours, uh, we hadn't done it uh, ever really because we didn't really have that as part of our maintenance. We pulled it and nothing. I'm like, holy cow, that would be horrible if we actually had a disconnect and it flew off down the road and the brakes didn't come on. Yeah. So you want to test your breakaway cable every now and then. Testing the breakaway is super simple because the mechanism is super simple. This thing basically just has two lines going to it and then it has a little divider in between. And when you pull it out, those contacts should close. And what it essentially does is just completely short circuits your brakes to your batteries. It says, just give it 100% because, hey, I've disconnected from my tow vehicle and I'm in trouble. And that's all it does. Now, testing this uh, will depend on the type of brakes that you have. If you have electric over hydraulic or hydraulic over electric, I, I get those messed up. It's real easy because you can hear it. So here's what you do. Just get a good grip on it and then yank it out. You can hear my brakes kick in. That's my brake actuator for the electric over hydraulic. You don't want to leave this thing for a long time, but get some contact cleaner, spray it up in there. Give it a second to evaporate. You can see this is the little pin that separates the contacts. Plug it back in and it should go out immediately. Now, if you have standard electric brakes, you're probably gonna to have to get somebody to help you with this. Get somebody with their ear down by the drum and have somebody pull it and you should be able to hear it click and actuate. The way the electric brakes work is they have a little magnet in there and then it attaches to the drum and it pulls and closes the brakes. So it's really super simple, but you do wanna test it. And again, have a spare in case somebody takes this or it breaks or it stops working. But we didn't test this for a long time, ever. We, you know, we just didn't know something we had to test. And the first time we tried this, it didn't work. So that would have been really, really bad. So be sure to check yours, maybe monthly, whenever you think about it. Last is a bit of a bonus, and it's not really a spare part item, but it's something that I saw when I was going through our stuff to make this video, mm -hmm. and that's LED bulbs. Now, a lot of your RVs, including ours, come with LED bulbs now, mm -hmm. but you might be surprised your outside lights are probably not. They're probably incandescent lights, and they get hot, and just replace them with LEDs. Yeah. That's what we did. That is it for the spare parts that we carry. We may have missed something. If we do, we will add it to the blog post and let us know in the comments below if, if there's something else that you carry with you on a regular basis that we missed. Yeah, different RVs need different stuff. That's so right. It'd be helpful could, to other people. Yeah, you could be helping out others by putting it in the comments. So leave it in the, just in the comments below. Mm -hmm. As always, please click the like button and please subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time.